video, we're going to discuss the prevention of Korsakoff syndrome. Now, I have another series of videos uh, called A Closer Look at Korsakoff Syndrome that I've broken up into three parts that gets much more in depth as to the definition and symptoms of these disorders. Uh, so if that's what you're looking for, go check those out first. Uh, but real quickly, Wernicke's encephalopathy is the acute swelling of the brain that happens um, when there's a sudden drop in thiamine levels. And Korsakoff syndrome refers more to the long-term brain damage that can follow that condition, and they have their own uh, sets of symptoms and prognosis. Korsakoff's can happen without um, Wernicke's happening prior, and not all um, individuals with Wernicke's will um, develop into Korsakoff syndrome. But in most cases, they are diagnosed together, and we kind of refer to this combined um, condition as WKS, or Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, even though they are two separate conditions. Uh, we'll be discussing them uh, together in, in this little quick video. Um, and a lot of what we discuss about with prevention uh, can also apply to other types of alcohol-related um, dementia. Now, the underlying cause of WKS is a lack of thiamine, vitamin B1. And even though alcoholism isn't the only condition that causes this, it is the most common cause of it and the one um, that we'll be focusing on. Now, the damage caused by Wernicke's happens in um, the thalamus and hypothalamus in the brain, and that's a different part of the brain than where the Korsakoff syndrome lesions occur. So that's why the symptoms and the impairments are different. Um, and we know that if this damage is caused by alcohol use, it is much more harmful just because of the other effects of alcohol on the brain and body, and that uh, is its own very large, very in-depth topic. Um, I encourage you to, to do some more research into that if, um, if you're curious what um, alcohol does to a variety of systems in the body, but it, it does a lot of damage. So um, if someone develops this as a result of excessive alcoholism, we know that they're going to have um, a much lower shot of any kind of recovery because there's uh, other types of damage that's already been done to the brain and the body, unfortunately. So even though these conditions affect two different parts of the brain, um, that's, it has the same underlying cause, so prevention looks uh, pretty much the same. A lot of it goes back to the family tree. Uh, we know that researchers have discovered this genetic marker that's linked to Korsakoff syndrome, and we also know that addiction runs in families, so you can imagine what happens when the combination occurs. Uh, my personal experience in my own family, I've had three members of my family uh, with Korsakoff syndrome. All of them also are addicted to alcohol. Um, so we know that you can have a whole room full of people who are addicted to alcohol. Not all of them are going to develop Korsakoff syndrome because you may or may not have this genetic marker. That's why in the background of my slides here, I, I picked this little DNA helix. It kind of reinforces an idea that you don't know going in if you're going to be um, affected by this or not. So prevention really is the best medicine, and it needs to start early. Um, often I get questions about prevention when someone is already a little far into the disease of addiction, damage is already being done, and at that point, once someone's already addicted and drinking excessively, there's not much we can really do um, other than get them to treatment as fast as possible and hope that um, they haven't progressed too far. So it needs to start early, and I get a lot of questions about uh, what to tell children um, if a parent is the one affected or a grandparent or an uncle or an aunt. And I say, you know, don't protect them from reality. You know, you, you give them information um, in developmentally appropriate ways. So the conversation you're going to have with your teenager is not the same conversation you're going to have with an 8-year-old. Uh, the, the bottom line is you can help them understand the cause and effect of different health choices. Now, kids today are getting a lot of messages, particularly surrounding obesity and food choice, but I think there's a lot more being done um, in terms of um, addiction and substance abuse awareness and prevention in the schools. So I think kids are already getting that message to some extent, so they're going to be open to this. They're not going to um, you know, really be surprised by hearing that something that you do can have long-term health implications, especially the older kids. Um, but from my personal experience, my, when I was growing up, my grandmother was diagnosed when she was only 45, so long before I came along. And I remember asking a lot of questions about why she was different than my friend's grandparents or why she asked me the same thing over and over or wanted to watch the same movie over and over. Um, and my parents helped me understand that. And as I got older, 
um, they were they told me more about the role of addiction and alcohol but um, it really kept me from being fearful of her because she acted differently than other people I think it was very helpful um, and it also helped me understand that wow you, know, you make some choices you can have some long-term consequences now WKS has a very sudden onset so even with a regular diet lots of exercise lots of B1 you can't keep up with the excessive alcohol intake that's why if uh, you go into a treatment facility you get an injection of thiamine not just a vitamin to take or not just different foods in your diet because the alcohol burns it up so quickly we can't ingest it through the stomach enough to keep up with what the brain needs at that point so you know, the bottom line is the, the best prevention uh, really is not getting to the to the point where it's becoming a problem being depleted with addiction if you have a loved one who's at risk of developing WKS due to their alcohol use the best thing you can really do is seek professional treatment um, and not just for the uh, person with addiction but the whole family because addiction really is a family illness uh, and if you're not sure where to start um, if people have health insurance I recommend starting there because a lot of changes have been made that have been very beneficial to addiction and behavioral health um, or if you're not comfortable or just really lost seek out your local 12-step group um, AA Alcoholics Anonymous is fantastic there's Al Anon uh, for family members and al -Ateen for children and teenagers so there are a lot of resources um, to help you at least get started with that if you are watching this because you have a loved one um, and you're trying to help them um, not get to the point where they have permanent damage now addiction is its own very complicated disease and if they are so far in their illness um, that they are not open to help you there's nothing you can really do to force it or keep them safe or prevent them from getting this far um, unless you are absolutely kind of micromanaging everything they eat what they drink it's pretty stressful um, so I would suggest uh, trying to get them to professional help and if not get some self-care so you can learn how to better protect yourself and with WKS you know a healthy lifestyle that has a balanced diet alcohol in moderation if at all and early treatment of any other conditions that can cause it is really the only prevention because um, keep in mind it can be caused by things like chemotherapy uh, other illnesses AIDS eating disorders Crohn's um, anything that can cause malabsorption of nutrients in the stomach can also cause it so just basically trying to keep everything in balance is really the only uh, prevention I get some questions about genetic testing can I you know determine if I have the marker the genetic marker um, so I can you know know to avoid alcohol for example I get that question a lot and yes the field of genetics is rapidly growing so there might be a test in the future I don't know of one as of yet a lot of genetic genetic testing is very expensive um, not usually covered by insurance for something of this nature um, but what I tell people even if they're not you know predisposed do they really want to deal with this lifestyle you know is it possible that maybe addiction runs in their family and that's going to do damage in and of itself because we do know there are different categories of alcohol related dementia and other things that could go on so that was just a kind of quick discussion about the prevention of Korsakoff syndrome um, if you have any uh, questions or comments please feel free to uh, leave a comment on the page or get in touch with me thanks